okay, okay. My God, I could let you clap for an hour. That was kind of nice. I very much miss doing more up north, and uh, welcome back to our third season. I'm so excited to be back, and um, I spent some time this summer uh, getting chased by bears and chasing a lot of fish and having a good time, and we're going to have a great season, I promise. You know, politics in Alaska, the only thing wilder are bears, and they're asleep right now, so the politics picks up. Yeah, we've got a great show tonight. David Link is here, of course, um, off of the Frozen Ground movie set, and uh, was here last year with us. You'll probably remember him. And uh, also, we've got some great politicians to come in, and uh, pundits, and we're going to be talking about all the stuff we didn't get to talk about this summer. So come on back with more Up North. We'll be right back. I think they remember you. I think they do. Um, he's the unit publicist for The Frozen Ground, currently in production in Alaska. You may have heard about it, the Robert Hansen uh, story, Nicholas Cage and John Cusack. He has over 25 years of experience. My God, you sound old when I say that. I am and old. He's worked on over 60 films, including Brokeback Mountain, American Beauty. Oh, I love that movie. Like, the end was so good. I know. Um, well, City I have a story Slickers, about the ending, you know. Uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And of course, he was here last year with us, and he was the unit publicist for Everybody Loves Big Miracles. Is that now it's called? called Big Miracle, which I think sounds like a cleaning fluid. <laughs> or a, a rapture film, I don't know. Ooh, the Big Miracle. Big Miracle. I don't, know, I don't know why it's being called Big Miracle, but it is now. It'll be called Big Miracle. I think it sounds like something that would be a cure for some sort of rash. <laughs> Blubber rash? You should get it. It's the big miracle. It's the big miracle. It takes care of the big problem, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and if you call now, we'll give you two cans of big miracle. <laughs> That's right. I know. But you know what? The I movie's going to be proud great. With it. Did anybody come down and see us um, shooting? Yeah, um, I did. Everybody loves whales? I, we had a great time. And we were on those mud flats way too long. Well, the mud Much flats. Much too long. Yeah. They have a way of sucking you in. <laughs> yes, they do. But they, you know, they actually, you know, that set was uh, completely constructed by us. And now I look down there, and there's, there's nothing there anymore. Just a couple trucks. That's it. Spent so many hours there. I know. So, so last year was the first big film done here. Yeah. Of course, uh, you know, we have this this socialist giveaway program to try to get films to come to Alaska. If you oh, the incentive the program. Yeah, it's, it's that all the other states have. Well, a lot of them do, certainly. Well, the ones that have people employed have an incentive program, sure. Right. Isn't it weird how that works? Interesting. It's, it's, it's curious to me. It's as though people haven't really figured out that, you know, when we're, when we're you know, mining something or drilling something or sucking something out of the ground or fishing for something, that's our resource. These films could be done anywhere. These films about Alaska. And the fact that we have an incentive program, actually, we get the bonus round that we don't have to go to the movies and be like, wait a minute. We don't even have those kind of trees in Alaska. What the hell are they doing? Oh, you're talking about the proposal. Yes, that movie made me angry. I know. Well. Sitka is gorgeous in its own right, but it doesn't look anything like Massachusetts. And that little wussy boat that he was driving around, like, oh my God, really? Yeah, that's a very Alaskan You caught point a halibut that, in that though. thing? You go under. But see, now you don't have to shoot the proposal in Massachusetts because you have a film incentive. Unfortunately, we are business people, and the producers will go where they can make the most for their dollar. And I'm telling you, there must be 25 films in New Orleans right now. Really? There must be, I, I know there are 10 going in Atlanta, Georgia. I have a friend there right now working with Billy Crystal and Bette Midler in a grandparents film called Us and Them. It's supposed to be very funny. Um, I just came from Florida. I just did Step Up for the dance movie. Right, because I saw the other three. Did, <laughs> it's not in our wheelhouse, but you know what? It's a fantastic movie. Really? It really is, yeah. Everybody's, anybody but who's I mean, a 13 year old are, girl knows about I mean, the Step Up movies. Not everybody's going to like the movies I like. You know, and they're hard to find, frankly. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but, yeah. I mean, when you're doing the work, it's the work. If you're a caterer, or you're doing makeup, or you're doing sound, or you're doing, a, you know, any of the electrical work on it, I mean, it's, yeah. it's just the work. So, you came up this year, um, you, you've gotten here a little bit into the process for sure for the frozen ground. and. You, you, have you been seeing people that you saw last year that, you know, aren't, I mean, they're yeah. last kids, like. Well, I walked on set the first day, and I must have seen at least three or four, you know, younger workers who were 
production assistants last year, and now they've moved up. And uh, one for, in particular, Shane, was a PA, and now he's a boom operator for us. They're moving up in their lines of progression. He's probably making twice the money he made last year. That's what it does for you. People learn the job and move up. You create a base of crew, and then more movies will come here. What you still need, I'm sorry, you still need a soundstage. I can't believe no one has stepped in and, and, and just you know, taken a building that's empty and made it into a soundproof stage. Well, haven't you guys had to do that a couple of times? We're using real houses. I just walked off set uh, over here off of Benson. We're using a real, somebody's real basement as Hanson's basement today. Yeah, that's kind of spooky. And I have, <laughs> yeah, I have the real uh, trooper who caught him waiting for me. I'm going to interview him today. Yeah. Glenn, Glenn Froth is waiting over Froth on set right now. Yeah, no, he's, um, and it's interesting, the reason that film is being made is because he okayed the story. Like he oh, was, is that he true? was, he was, yeah. yeah, he was the guy that said, okay, let's do this. He's the hero. And, and, and so, and, and he gives a lot of credit to the 17-year-old the who got away. And I know a lot of people have been yeah. worried about this. Why would we glorify a Because I was monster? 15 years old, reading the paper in Homer at Sourdough Express Bakery, looking at Kevin, the baker, going, mm. <laughs> Could it be you? And I was terrified because I realized it could be anybody. And that was, you well, know, that's it's the not, I mean, scary part. for yeah. crying out loud, we just went through Palin and now we got to have a Robert Hansen story, really? I mean, that's two scoops One, of crazy. Two, two. So, so I think people were concerned about glorifying him. Right now he's rotting in a jail in Seward. I, Hello, there's Mr. no Hansen. way this film is glorifying. This um, is a beautifully written it, movie, it, by the way. It, and it is truly, I mean, I've, I've been lucky enough to talk to people on the set and, and the director and, and different different actors and and really this is about this is about the story of a cop believing a woman that everybody else threw away absolutely and in him getting her to trust him which he'd never had any reason to trust anybody before that he was able to break this huge case and, well, it's also um, about the dehumanization of this woman and how they did not believe her because of what she did for a living right. so she, they debased her didn't believe her didn't follow up what she told them, and it well, took it wasn't illegal to before Robert Hansen. It wasn't illegal to rape a prostitute. It wasn't illegal to um, to rape your wife. So really, yeah. So at one point, you know, a prostitute had gone in and said, "My God, you know, this man raped me." And they said, "What do you want us to charge him with? Theft of service?" Mm. So we had a Ouch. whole class of people that were yeah. thrown away. We still do. You know, we hear people say when a homeless person freezes to death, well, that's a lifestyle choice, right? Mm -hmm. You know, well, this, this is a, a situation, I think, from our past that maybe people can learn from our mistakes and not, and not take that away right. from people. The humanity, you don't just take them and put them on a list with big game animals. Well, also, I think this film um, would also remind people to be wary at times. Be wary of, of people who maybe doing something a little odd in, in your presence. Mm -hmm. Because evil exists. Let's keep an eye out, and especially for your kids, keep an eye out. Well, that was a fantastic way to end the segment, David Blink. Thank you so much for that perky thought. Uh, I, I, we'll I, be right I, I will back. tell you this, I will tell you this. I think, first of all, that my necklace is falling off. That's really hot. Yikes. Um, I think really what this is about is um, something that we are bringing here, not something that's being sucked out of here and taken somewhere else in a pipeline. And right. your help, um, people's help throughout this whole thing, because we're up against the Republicans right now in the, in the House trying to take this system away. And, um, and I want you that. back here next year doing, you know, the Shannon Moore story. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Now in development. It'd be like, you know, three minutes long, kind of boring. It'd be fun. We'll be back with more up north. Thanks, David. Is that it? Welcome back. I'm so glad you're joining us for our panel, the first of the season. And I'm every one of our panel members has been on here in previous seasons, and they've, they're some of my favorites for obvious reasons. Um, the best bill in Juneau, for instance, uh, representing the east side of Anchorage and fighting for Alaskans uh, every day in every way. Please say hello to my good friend, Senator Bill Welikowski. <laughs> Just so you know, just 
so you know, he doesn't say I'm his good friend. I say he's my good friend. I don't want to get him. I don't want this to be in like anybody's, you know, campaign literature. Or anything. Um, he's an Alaskan dispatch journalist and a fine-tuned potster for sure. He's uh, one of my favorite curmudgeons, Craig Medred. Hi. And always, and always so sporty. What can I say? You're sporty spice on this panel. That's right. In my Alaska t-shirt. That's right. Um, he's the former editor of the Anchorage Times. Whatever happened to that? Oh, never mind. Um, and he's a columnist for the Anchorage Daily. It was Daily. a sad story. It was a kind of a sad story. Um, Anchorage Daily Planet and the author of the Snowflake Rebellion. Uh, and another one here, uh, Murder at 40 Below. Because, you know. Getting murdered at 20 below is so much easier on people. Um, say hello again, well, once again. That was before global warming. <laughs> That's the right. Next, the follow-up's going to be murder at 10 above. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Brennan, of course, here. And, uh, oh, my gosh. What a motley crew. This is going to be fun. Are you ready? I guess. If it starts to get awkward, that'll be our safety safety word, because we're so close here. Um, we just had David Link on, of course, and you guys have seen, you know, the frozen ground is being filmed. Of course, everybody loves big, huge whale miracles um, that was filmed last year. What are your feelings? I mean, first of all, just on the whole topic of Hanson and this being a film, I want to talk about that, but also the film credit the whole system. But as far as, as Hanson... What I'm are you not, laughing at? I'm not at? laughing. I'm not laughing at Hanson. I was thinking about the Barley Project when you brought that up, and I was just thinking, gee, you know, we like to spend money. At least this expense created some real jobs. I mean, how much did we try and spend trying to create jobs farming barley at Delta? Well, then, may, you know, maybe that's a good reason to kill it, because it's working, and oh, crap, now everybody's going to want money to make jobs. Maybe that's what's happening. What do you, Tom Brennan, you wrote uh, in one of the chapters of your book, Murder at 40 Below, pre-global warming, what uh, about Robert Hansen? And, I, you know, we were here when this happened. What, what's your take on it now being a Hollywood story with John Cusack? It's, uh, well, I'm I, actually, I'm very glad to see it happening. Uh, but you have to wonder about, uh, you know, the effect on tourism is, uh, you know. If, People come if, here to kill our strippers? <laughs> but, oh, my I, God. But, but I'm doing a, an interview tomorrow with the Travel Channel, so there must be some interest in it. But, uh, you know, uh, well, I think Alaska, Alaska visitors are, are pretty, uh, they're, they're a pretty fearless crowd, I think. You know, they're above the average. They, oh, the people they, that park in Winnebago's in the Walmart parking lot? Yeah. Probably no. going to Alaska? <laughs> yeah. Woo, fearless. No, I think, well, they're, that big me. yellow smiley face scares the hell out of me. <laughs> They're, they're, they're a little more adventuresome, at least, than the average tourist that, that, that goes to the Walmart and Walmart down at Disney think, World. Just yeah. think of Walmart as a circling of the old Conestoga wagons. Yeah. And it's kind of you know, an extension of that. Yeah, if they were fighting unions. <laughs> it would be exactly like that. What, what's your take on it, Senator Wilikowski? You're a co-sponsor on, on the bill to, well, I, to you bring know, this. If you, if you look at the impacts, we always talk about diversifying our economy, right? Here is something that we're doing, which is actually diversifying our economy. It's something that has created thousands of jobs all across Alaska. It's brought in tens of millions of dollars into the state. And I think that's a good thing for Alaska. The incentives, uh, you know, people talk about the money that we've spent on the incentives. It's been about $10 million. After the big miracle comes out, it'll probably be about 18 or $20 million. Wow, you could buy like two gas lines from Anchor Point to Homer for that. <laughs> so, you know, from a state point, really? it, it brought in... Uh, about 12,000 nights uh, were, were bed nights were used at the Captain Cook Hotel, which brings in revenue to the municipality of Anchorage. So I think from, a, from an economic perspective, it's, it's good for the state of Alaska, and it's good for Anchorage, and, and it's creating jobs, and those are all good, positive things. I think, I think it's a very successful uh, piece of legislation. It's done what, it's, what it was intended to do, and it is bringing people here and, uh, and creating interest among a lot of people who you know, I think we'll be thinking about coming here next year and the year after. And, well, you know, it's mainly because of all the scenery and, and the interesting things that happen here. I don't think really, it comes I, just because it was a place where somebody got murdered. And right. it'd be really cool, cool if we, like, generated our own filmmakers instead of, you know, young kids leaving Alaska to get a career. We and, have, yeah. though. Well, I know, but I'm, we, I'm talking about... Yeah, I mean, we, we have... have uh, we've actually had big time producers who sort of fed connections here. Absolutely. Like but, we, I mean, day, but they had to go outside to find work. But there's independent filmmakers, you know, Dave Turnbull, who was a, 
who, who operated camera for us here for two years, he, he made a film. It, it got into film festivals. I mean, th they have groups of people coming together to do this. The thing with incentive is you have to spend $100,000. So if you're a television show for you know Discovery and you're doing Sarah Palin's Alaska, you get a film credit. If you're Shannon Moore doing it at the tap route, you don't. <laughs> so that's kind of how that works. But I mean, if you're smaller, it doesn't happen. But the other thing is, there's also a lot of great stories to be told in Alaska. The story of the Iditarod, for instance. Yeah. And they're talking about coming up here and doing a movie. And do we want that story told in British Columbia or in Louisiana, or do we want it told here in Alaska, putting Alaskans to work? And I think uh, this is a win-win situation. Well, I, I talked right. to someone um, this week from the movie who said, I could do a movie here that's set in New York. We just build the sets. He's like, but if it's, you know, we could, there could be a movie that's New York here. And I, I think that, I think New York deserves the payback. Because I'm tired <laughs> of looking at them with other things. And you know, right now, I think this is kind of an urgent um, discussion to have because the House of, the House Republicans in Juneau are sort of holding this up in hostage because of, I think, probably the governor's oil, oil bill bailout. I like to call it a bailout, Tom. <laughs> you like to call it a friendly gesture. It's different. But um, I think it's really important because these films right now, this film credit program is getting ready to sunset in 2013. And they are making film, they're, they're making plans for films now. People are buying stories. People are getting lined up. I mean, I know people who have the next four films planned out. So we actually need to make sure that we can stay in line for this. And I, you know, just, uh, I know some people, there has been some talk about how this is somehow linked to the oil tax bill. I don't think it's linked at all. We have, we have credits. In fact, the maximum credit you can get under the film tax bill is 44%. Typically, companies get, are getting around 32% or so. The credits that you get for exploration in the state of Alaska, if you're an oil company, are 70 to 80% if you're developing wells, are 60%. So we're giving, you know, this isn't just something that's exclusive to the film industry. We're, we're giving credits to spur other things. I know we'll, maybe you'll get into that a little bit later. But, yeah. but the, you know, and the money that we've spent on the credits, uh, the tax incentive program for films has been about $10 million so far. Probably be $20 million in the next year or so. But the money we've spent on tax credits for the oil industry is $4 billion. So there's really no comparison between the two. Right. I know more people working in the film than slope, just saying. I'm kidding. We gotta run to a break. I ran late. I'm just remembering how to do this. We'll be back in just a couple moments with our panel.